Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Cinema and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at Nova Roma. This is a new game from Stan Korodonsky published by Half a Kingdom Games. It plays from 1 to 4 players in 60 to 120 minutes. So, a new game, Nova Roma, a new game about Romans doing things and this is a new game I said from Stan Korodonsky, lately he lost he did from the first game from his game, a new publishing company Half a Kingdom Games. A Resurgence, which yes. is one that we enjoyed quite a bit, and which was only reasons that I backed this game on Kickstarter, and now we have it. Mm -hmm. We have we opened have the box. It? Oh yeah, the, the I'm skipping game, to the good stuff. Yes, the game has components, yeah. it has rule books, yeah. all the things it needs to be able to do things with it on the table, mm -hmm. and when you follow the rules, you will actually also be able to do normal things that make sense. Cool, the, and what does make sense in this game? Yeah, that's a good you question. Ask. Yeah, I know you ask, actually. I ask. Yes, I ask. Uh, Nova Roma is a, I'm going to say like worker placement, action selection game or an action selection game you have this action grid where you're going to place your worker and then you're going to be able to do the action that is basically like in the row and uh, row and the column of the people do that you're placing and you also have the emperor and wherever he is saying if you line up with the emperor you're going to get a boost to your action and if you line up with your own workers that you placed earlier turns then you're going to get to get a boost for the action the actions that you are going to do uh, is kind of feeling like little mini games they don't connect in many ways you're going to get resources the resources does connect you yeah. use them for other things you're going to get resources and you're going to get helpers, those kind of like help you with other actions, these are cards. Uh, and then you're also going to get some uh, tiles for your estate, which is basically a place to place artisans to get income. Uh, and then you're going to use all of these things to uh, do shipping contracts, moving on different two different shipping tracks. You will be build, 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 building buildings, paying resources for that and then placing cubes into different areas of Nova Roma to basically have a real majority and get some bonuses throughout the game as well and you will be doing one more thing which is racing in the hippodrome trying to be the best there ever was at yes. racing and then there's going to be like some points for whoever is in the lead in a specific track each round mm -hmm. that is almost like kind of all the things you do in the game you can't play the game by those rules but it's kind of like the the overview of everything let's talk about the game yes first of all I already spoiled that there are components. Yes. I'm sorry about that. But you didn't spoil that there is artwork in there the game. There is. I'm very excited to tell you oh, that the artwork. there is artwork. Oh, good, good, good. It is the classical D'Amico style artwork. And it sounds like it's a style of art. D'Amico. Well, it actually it, is a thing. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like you're saying the Miko. You're saying D'Amico, like D-E. Miko. D'Amico. The, the Miko. Miko style. Yes, but D'Amico is nothing. The, it's the Miko, the which Miko. is a, a person who makes yes. arts. It's um, not like Cubism, the Miko, uh, and, and well, all of that. Uh, for me, Back he, to the things he has about made art. kind of a genre now. Yes. So if you have seen one of his games, like uh, um, featured his art before, then you you kind of know what you get. You'll remember it. Yes. And I think it looks great. Yes. And I think the, the player pieces that you mm -hmm. sit out on them on the grid yeah. is great. They are all like chunky yes. and it's easy to see which color is which. It, which they I have really enjoy. Them. Yes, I love that. And as you said, there are like many different segments on the board. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's easy to differentiate what is what is going on in each segment. Yeah, it's a, it's a very clear artwork. The iconography is easy to understand. I feel like most of it is very simple. It also has not the biggest, but a pretty big a player, a sword player marker. It also has two points on it because you will get those if you have it at the end of the game. Two points for the player. Uh, I like it. I like mm -hmm. it. It's big. It also has something else. Yes. I'm guessing that is a rule book. Yes, you're supposed to ask me if oh. it is a rule book. Yes. It's, it's the first video we ever done together. Welcome to the new channel, Rambling of the Boards. Uh, it is <laughs> oh, that was a great name. Rambling of the Boards. We will make a new channel and we will just delete this one. It's very straightforward because of that the game is pretty straightforward in a way that like it's not super simple but there is like very distinct actions and they don't really bleed into each other so as soon as you understand how the grid works you basically can just read the different actions because the actions as they, they like 
this is one action, this is one action. It's not like, it's not like when you do this action, then that happens in these actions. They are very, yes. one action is one action. Uh, one action is not two actions. <laughs> uh, so I will say that it's a pretty, like it's a big, big text. So it's a lot of, that's very good to show on camera. Like an almost white rule book, that didn't work so well. Um, it has pictures. Mm, it's pretty big text. Don't you agree? Like it's, uh, yeah. it feels like it's yeah. made for people who can't read or have like uh, bad eyesight. Mm -hmm. This is like the normal. Uh, the, on yeah, the back the, the, is, it is bigger than normal. It's um, bigger on the inside. It's bigger on the inside. It actually is. Like yeah. the text on the front and the back is kind of normal and the inside. I can't it's remember bigger. if the game comes with a play rate, but all of the actions are explained, like what you do yes. on the board itself. So I didn't feel really feel like I needed one. But I mean, you, you do it, have, it have a reference. You have cards. a round reference for how, how, how the round work oh, yeah. and also like for the final score. I enjoy so that. So you do have what it's called player rates. Yes, playtime and player count. We have played this game with two and four players. Ooh. And two player game has taken us 60 to 75 minutes ish. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the five, four, <laughs> five player is impossible. Six player game. <laughs> Game. Four player took us about two hours, but that was the first time we played this as well. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, di I didn't even feel that, like that was too long. Like, no, not at all. 30 minutes per player, and you can get it down from that. So, mm, I might even think about playing it solo. I'm thinking about playing it solo. Mm -hmm. I haven't done so yet. Dreaming I actually about it. read the solo rules. Huh? Uh, oh. I just haven't gotten to play it. Just a spoiler alert, I like the game enough to, to, to want to go back and play it solo. Nice. So, I might be talking about that at the end of the, the month, or maybe next. And, End of the next month, if I don't get a time to play yes. it now. Uh, just brief, briefly, in a two-player variant, mm -hmm. uh, because a big part of this game is this grid and trying to block each other. So when you're playing two players, you're kind of using a, a third, like using red is legionnaires that you're placing out. I hate when these kind of things are red, because I always play red. So when I had to play <laughs> pieces, I, I'm no problem not playing red if there's no red in the game. Yeah. But then when there is a red thing in the game, I'm trying to place them when I'm supposed to play my purple, the pink things, and then my brain is not happy. But that's not that's my problem. What did you feel about the two-player uh, dummy or variant to make the, the grid better? I really felt like that simulated other players in mm -hmm, the game mm -hmm. because when you're play because you have this emperor that also give boosts your action, then you want to place a blocking piece pieces where you think that your opponent will be getting the most boosting mm -hmm. of his action you might be like oh you have resource for for that maybe you will do that but but overall i think that worked great and it also takes kind of short amount of time so mm -hmm. it was very yes. easy to implement the most interesting part about this game and the main like drawing me in mechanism of this game is the grid like we're gonna talk about everything else but everything else is kind of seen that before it's kind of these are things that are there to make this grid interesting because if there aren't any actions to take then why is the grid there and the grid is kind of the one thing that makes this feel unique and, and like stand out and also makes because this game when I read the rules I was like oh it's kind of like Trajan Oh yeah. Uh, because Trajan has the Mancala thing and then you have all these different mini games that you do some of them have, have interaction but most of them don't Mm, I will feel like the in the mini games here has a bit more interaction, but you've taken away the like solo of the Mancala, which I love in in Trajan. Yes, uh, that's and trying to hide it like mechanism. the solo, the solo in Mancala. Don't look at my Mancala. Uh, this is now the sign for Mancala. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> this is the sign for something. I don't remember what that was. In my daily was. life. Uh, yes, uh, but yeah, he <laughs> used the Mancala. Like oh Mancala. Mancala. Uh, and you say that like at a coffee shop. I want two Mancala. I don't know. Back to the grid. Yeah. Uh, the, back to the grid. The grid is amazing. The yeah, grid it is. is taking the action selection mechanism and turning it up to 11. But you are adding interaction in a very interesting way. And now, over to you. Talk about the grid. Yeah, I, I think the great uh, grid. <laughs> the grid is so great. Because, as you said, it adds interaction to the mm -hmm. game. You not do not only want to play something that is good for you, but you also want to not leave spaces that are really good mm -hmm. for older people open. You the might, older people, not the, the older ones. Other people. So, I said other, I didn't I? Old, I? I thought it said older. <laughs> well, sometimes you have to just go for what is good for you, but mm -hmm. it, maybe you have like a plan and then yeah. you have to like, oh, but 
but I can actually do a really good action there or you are able to do a really yeah. good action there and you have to stray from your plan to do something else but I also really what I really love about the mechanism the grid I haven't I have seen that before that you like you're in the intersection of two actions mm -hmm. you get to do that yep. I think that is really clever but it like also it. because of that boosting mechanism you're also setting yourself up for the action that you're doing a lot of times you're mm -hmm. going to be better on which I really enjoy yeah and and, and and there comes the blocking as well because it's kind of uh, if you play a three player game then we might go for different or four player game we might go for different strategies so you don't really want to do the uh, one of the actions I want to do but I can't really let you have like a power three version of that especially not right now because now it's going to be super good for you to do that one thing that will then give you the things that you need to do things with things and the thing is good for things and points so I feel like it's kind of, as you said, like it's the dilemma of do I want to do what's best for me or do I want to block you to make it worse for you the thing you want to do. And also the other dilemma is I want to do that in a level tree. I want, I want to yes. be able to do that because then I get to build mm -hmm. this type of building in this type of area that will give me a lot of final scoring with the majority, yep. for example. But to be able to do that in level 3, I have to do level 1 and 2 first. And then I have to weigh that up against the other actions, mm -hmm. because the game... Hmm, it isn't a short game, but it feels like you have uh, you are in a rush to do everything all mm -hmm. the time because you have so few actions and you have these goals that you're trying to achieve, which are really hard, some of them. So you're always trying to what you call it, like, decide between what is best for you too. <clears throat> yeah, let's talk a bit about the different mini games around the board. Yes. And none of them are, I will say, like, I'm going to say, like, no one of them, none of them in itself are very interesting. I agree. It's, but they are just, like, just interesting enough to make me care about what I'm doing in the grid. Yes. Back to the grid, like the grid is what makes this game yes. good. Uh, if you took this game and it was just like an action selection game, like I'm gonna do the building action now, that would not be very interesting. And let's talk briefly about like one is getting like buying resources, one is uh, getting tiles for your estate, which make that better to, to, to take income with your artisans. One is placing those artisans out and getting the income. One is getting these cards, you have some that's gonna be one time each round when you do an action, it's gonna be better. Or, for example, you could have the one that says like, okay, when you're doing the shipping action, you can flip this card around and now you have like one more power than you were yes. supposed to. Mm -hmm. So you have kind of like some twists there and you have some final scoring ones as well. It's kind of like random when they come up and if there's something you need and stuff like that. But you, there's always going to be stuff that you can use. So it's yes. not like, oh, there's nothing there for me. You can draw from the top. There's many different ways. And then you have the hippodrome where you basically are moving on three tracks and trying to be the first on those tracks, mm -hmm. not very interesting, like you are... It's fun when you play it, but it's not like I can't make it sound super interesting because it's like it's moving on three tracks and you get something and have to pay something. And, and then you have the shipping and the building, which are similar but different. You will need to pay for different contracts, depending on the power level you have, you will have different uh, available contracts to choose from. And then with the shipping, you're going to just pay. It doesn't really score you any points in the, um, the card itself. And you're gonna to get to move on the tracks. And the both tracks are giving you good good uh, income, like a mm -hmm. good uh, bonus, but also gonna be, be able to be worth a lot. The first time I played, uh, we played like a four player game. I went with both of my ships to the end of the track at the same time or first. So I got like 26 points for that at the end of the game. Yeah, so quite but a then lot I of did points. kind of did that. I didn't yeah. do any of the building. I'm gonna come back to that basically. And the building, you place cubes in a formation, kind of feels like a tiny towns thing. It, it oh, isn't yeah. really, but it kind of reminds me because <laughs> you have like one building that says like, oh, it's it's three. Yes, yeah, a formation. Uh, formation. A formation. Yeah. That's the thing of of, uh, of cubes. And you place them out, and depending on the power level you have, you can place like in area one, two, or three. They get smaller, and they are basically have the most cubes to get victory points. There's like a little bit of in income there, depending the, during the game as well. Uh, but but so it, the, the mini games for me are as you said just interesting enough and just different enough. Yes, I, I agree, and it isn't all only final scoring either. Both like building wise, you can get these income things. Mm -hmm, you can also mm -hmm. get you get points just for building the building. I really love that. Also, the hippodrome. You need to move up on those tracks to get if you want to get more of these scoring tokens for mm -hmm. your sc scoring area i don't know what that is it's called. called a mosaic board mosaic board and you're gonna Which get feels three really powerful uh, of these 
these strips, uh, the mosaic board feels very powerful. Uh, weird sentence. You're gonna get three of these strips with different goals on them, like a level one, level two, and level three. And you're trying to do the goals, you can only do one each time it's your turn. You found out that the hard way last time you played, you forgot yes. that. Yeah. And you had like skipped doing ones because you want to do the big ones, but then mm -hmm. you didn't have enough turns left. Nope. And and you try to, to do them, so you get more points for the harder ones, but you also want to have like the diagonals, uh, one row, one column, all those yes. stuff to get like three bonus in a row. things. Three in a row, yeah. that's true. Um, and, and these, it might feel like the first time you play, it might feel like these are forcing you to do the specific things. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's it, you, you have to kind of I, I think that this is kind of one of these games where focusing on something is going to be good because you're going to most of the time be better at doing the action many times. Yeah. So when I play now, I look at that mosaic grid and I'm kind of like, okay, which of these am I going to do and which am I just going to ignore? Yes. And you can kind of decide at the beginning of the game and just do it. Mm -hmm. And you will then have to like do some hoops and turns here and there to make it work depending on how the other play in the grid and all of that but it is one where a strategy from the beginning of the game is going to be a positive thing I agree. and focusing on a few elements is going to be better than trying to do everything yeah i, I like. agree and i think you can completely ignore certain actions in this oh, yeah. game you don't have to have any helper cards nope. you don't have to build anything in your what you call it estate, estate. Yep. you don't have to do any shipping you, but you have to do something yes doing things <laughs> yes is good I can't uh, say it about anything and just like sitting there and where's the point? I'm gonna just uh, get. Uh, she said I things. didn't need to do anything. <laughs> didn't need to do anything. So yeah, there's many different ways to get points, many different scoring. I feel like every time I play, it's gonna be different but similar. Yeah. Because I don't feel like oh this time I'm gonna do a heavy hippodrome actions uh, actions strategy. It's gonna feel so different than doing the ship. Like, it's, it's mostly getting resources and converting them in different ways to points. Yes. So let's talk a bit about the weight. Yeah. And who is it for? I think this is a medium game. Mm -hmm. And I think this combines, like, an Euro optimization with a really interesting action selection the with, with interaction in it. It mm -hmm. could be, like, could say that it's the same blocking as a worker placement game as well. But mm -hmm. it has, like, more options i feel yes. like and yeah. I, what i also really enjoy which i kind of forgot to talk about is that you have like a joker action as well mm -hmm. so uh, which also opens up the game a little bit yeah but you need to pay for it you have to, you have to pay for it so final thoughts yes. i agree with you basically on the who's it for and stuff like that cool uh, final thoughts before we do that if you are new to the channel and you enjoyed this little video talking about nova roma then you can help us out in a very big way and it helps you as well because you get to see more of these faces talking words about games yes and that is by giving us a victory point point. and we get victory points when you click that subscribe button you can also click the bell to get notifications every time we post a new video final thoughts time you begin nova roma go 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 i really like nova roma mm -hmm. um, um, I, I I agree that it feels a little like Trajan. I don't know if it has a, like a little similar theme, and that is why my brain connects it. But it has these mini games, yeah. and I agree with you that the grid, the grid, the grid. <laughs> is what makes this game interesting. Mm -hmm. I really love the grid. is is the main thing of the game. It is what will keep this game interesting again mm -hmm. and again because yeah. all of the other things are i don't want to say the same but mm -hmm. they are it's the same shtick every time yeah. but getting to place the worker in that exact space that you wanted mm -hmm. And you are then trying to, I'm hoping that nobody puts their worker in exactly that mm -hmm. intersection by the time it's my turn again. And it's so rewarding when you do. And when it doesn't work, then you're sitting like, hmm, okay, but I need to do that action. Mm. What then can I combine with, like, which intersection will match with that the best? And what should I do now? I really think that as, uh, that is a really interesting puzzle. And I think this is a great game, so I'm going to give this an 8. Nova Roma is an interesting game. I really enjoyed it. Like, it's, it seems like we're saying, like, oh, all the mini games are similar and not that interesting. But everything comes together in such an interesting way because of the grid. And as you said, basically, it makes all the other stuff make sense and makes all the other stuff feel important and interesting because... 
it is so important for me to be able to place that space so I can do that action now, so I can get the resources I need, so I can go that later. Oh, you blocked me, what am I supposed to do now? And after, except for like the Joker, which you need like influence to be able to pay for, uh, and depending on the strategy, that's not going to be easy to get. Um, if one action is like every, there's four in that row or that column, you can't do that action mm -hmm. anymore. So it's going to be harder that way. Um, but I just, I just enjoy my time playing this game. It's a very fun, medium style game from Sankonowski. I'm going to give it an 8 as well. Cool. And that's going to be the end of the video. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Sidoa. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye bye.